The floating island is one of Subnautica's most iconic locations, a tropical paradise that has sat on 4546B surface for thousands of years, allowing for the growth of a lush carpet of plants and strange exotic fruits on one of this watery world's rare landmasses. But what if I told you this island is doomed? As its name suggests, the floating island isn't connected to any land underneath, with the whole landmass kept above the waves by creatures known as floaters. These creatures survive by attaching themselves to the rock and digesting its nutrients to grow and flourish. They have a thin layer of helium stored in their outer membranes, giving them natural buoyancy, so as they increase in size they gain the ability to move increasingly heavy weight, and over time they have lifted the floating island out of the water and up to the surface. The plants that now grow on the island filter nutrients down into the rocks below, feeding the floaters beneath and giving them a renewable food source, allowing the circle of life to continue and the floaters to live for thousands of years. But if we venture below the surface, we see our first signs that things aren't quite right. Underneath the island there there is an almost constant rain of rock, sediment and debris falling towards the seafloor, and while from a first person view these rocks don't look that big, size in Subnautica can be deceiving. If we use the player as a size reference, some of these rocks are almost as big as Riley, who is thought to be around 5 foot 5. Big up to our short king, but if we're conservative and say some of these rocks are around 4 foot long, that would still make them about 1.2 meters tall, which is not an insignificant size. For simplicity, if we assume all dimensions are equal, that would make these rocks around 1.7 to 8 meters cubed, and as they're falling almost constantly, how much of this could the island reasonably take before it disintegrates back into the sea? So I decided to try and take some rough measurements of the island size to try and figure it out. Now originally I had a whole section here where I was trying to measure the island using cyclops, and let's just say it was a little painful, but I did come up with a rough number. But then I used my discord server to speak to my patreon member Mateus, and let's just say this guy knows his stuff when it comes to figuring out areas. While I was having beacons slip through the floor, Mateus was using the science to come up with a more accurate calculation. He got a screenshot of the island from the Subnautica interactive map, and traced it in a software called QGIS, which stands for Quantum Geographic Information System, so things were getting a little more hardcore than I'd originally thought. He used the interactive map to find the coordinates of the northern, southern, and most eastern points of the island, and connected them in the mapping software using a triangle, which allowed him to scale the island to the correct size. From here, he used the software to calculate the area of the island and was even able to add correctly scaled cyclopses for some sweet little scaled maps. This gave us a final area of 54,500 meters squared, but this was only if the island was a meter thick, which obviously it isn't. So we needed to estimate its height to calculate its volume. At this point I decided I should probably try to make myself useful, so I took some calculations of the island's depth by using the in-game coordinate system. I tried to take a rough average by placing myself below the island and then roughly in the middle of it. Obviously this isn't going to be perfect, as it doesn't consider the hole in the island center, caves or mountains, but it gives us a rough average to work with. And this came out at 40 meters, so all we had to do then was times 54,500 meters squared by 40 to give us our final answer of 2,180,000 meters cubed of rock. This is of course still an estimate and not an exact figure, but I think it's pretty accurate all things considered. So if we say we're losing 1.728 meters cubed of rock every second, we'd run out of floating island in roughly 350 hours, or 14 and a half days. Now in reality, it would probably be even quicker than this, as we didn't take into account the hole in the island's centre or its caves. But the real killer is the fact the island is easily losing more than 1.728 meters cubed of rock a second. This is the size of just one boulder, and these things are falling all over the place, and often more than one at a time. Sure some will be smaller, but some could be bigger, and I could easily see the island collapsing in just a couple of days depending on how much rock it's really losing, and once the collapse begins, the rate of loss will probably increase exponentially. In reality, this island should be gone not long after you first discover it, and my bet would be within the first 48 to 72 hours, which makes the island long buried by the time of the events of Below Zero. And this situation isn't unprecedented, in fact it's probably happened thousands or even tens of thousands of times before. Taking a short trip, we find ourselves amongst the underwater islands. These land masses, like the floating island, are suspended in the water by ancient floaters. But the real clues here lay in the geological record. Different types of erosion mould the land in different ways, with the wind, rain and waves that have shaped the underwater water islands, writing a story into the rock that can be used to tell much about the planet's history, climate and weather patterns. Maybe these islands were once connected into one large landmass like the floating island, but some of the ancient floaters underneath somehow died or couldn't take the pressure, slowly pushing the island back below the waves. It's also possible the island simply broke apart over time, with the remaining floaters only being large enough to suspend certain chunks of rock, with the rest falling back to the seafloor. This is the future facing the floating island, and even after it has resubmerged below the waves, the decline will
still continue. Even underwater, rocks still fall off the two largest underwater islands, suggesting that these raised landmasses have a natural life cycle, rising from the depths before collapsing back to the seafloor once all their nutrients have been exhausted by the ancient floaters pushing them upwards. And as the floaters reproduce, new islands are raised from the seafloor in a never-ending cycle of death and rebirth. For a time, some may hold steady, as if you look at the smaller floating islands, no rock is seen to be falling from them, suggesting they have reached a temporary form of balance and equilibrium. But even they cannot fight the passage of time. But this all ignores how plants act as an infinite food source which theoretically allows the floaters to feed forever and keep the land raised. So why now, after thousands of years, is the floating island declining? Well, I have a couple of different theories. We don't know how long ancient floaters live, but the PDA suggests that the ones found below the floating island have aged along with the rock they support, suggesting the island was raised in one intact piece. As floaters can't swim and simply attach themselves to whatever is nearby, this means that there isn't any new floaters to replace the old ones, and even if they do live for thousands of years, they might not live forever, and we might simply be seeing the final end of their life cycle and dying of old age, with the island beginning to crumble under the pressure as its foundations decrease in strength. It's also possible that the floaters lose the helium keeping them afloat over time. This process might be slow and take thousands of years, but as helium is a noble gas that can't be produced through chemical reactions and only by nuclear fusion, they will eventually run out. Unless these guys are secretly nuclear reactors. This theory is further supported by the fact that the only floaters found under the floating island are massive in size, suggesting no juveniles are rising up to help take the weight. If anything, they would raise new bits of rock that clash with the existing island, and it's unlikely the pressure from the floater's buoyancy would be enough to cement these new rocks into the island's existing structure. Even if they could add new rock to the island, in-game, juvenile floaters can only be found in the safe shallows and grassy plateaus, so the floating island stands little chance of being reborn unless the floaters drift a significant distance from where they are found. But this is unlikely, as the juvenile floaters were probably born at the floating and underwater islands and drifted to where they are found today. The second theory is the opposite of the first. While we may not see any juvenile floaters, maybe this is an oversight from the developers. In this case, the island could be collapsing due to floater overpopulation. While the plants on the surface provide a never-ending food source, the floaters beneath may have reproduced to such a large extent that the nutrients may no longer be sufficient for them to survive, starving and weakening them over time, causing the island to split and break apart. In this scenario, it's possible that parts of the island could survive, splitting into chains of smaller islands supported by groups of ancient floaters, but whatever is left will look significantly different to what we see today. These remnants may even end up becoming larger versions of the underwater islands if the floaters' buoyancy isn't strong enough, leading underwater islands to form like steps towards any surviving landmass. It's hard to say which of these theories is right, but I think the old age theory is most likely. The underwater islands show that some form of landmass survives after it goes back below the waves, which is likely due to some slight variation in floater age, as they won't all die at the same time, so any decline is slow rather than a sudden freefall to the bottom of the sea. This is supported by rock continuing to fall from the islands once they're underwater, and once a tipping point is reached, the islands will eventually break apart. Whichever theory is true, the floating island in its current form is doomed. Without any replacement rock, it's inevitable that it's going to collapse, and with the current rate of loss, it's going to be soon. Thanks again to Mateus for helping with this video. In fact, we've spent so long on the maths for this, I think the island is collapsing under our feet right now. Let's get clear and swim for the Aurora. That must be safe, right? If you want to be sure, you'll need to click right here to watch this video next, otherwise your safe haven might become your tomb. And special thanks to my patrons, Asmodeus, Mateus, Graham Deloy, and Baron Windy for making this video possible.